Yeah, I like the way I talk and the way like, you talk. Like, slang sometimes. Have you heard of this theory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fam. <laughs> <laughs> All the regular stuff. Yeah, but. just everybody on TikTok always picks up on like the Toronto accent because yeah. they're not really used to it, eh? Nah, you have it though. You I don't. I don't think I have it like that. I, I don't think, think you have it though. It's it's a little bit like I don't think I have a Toronto accent. I don't think you. You have more of like a. You kind of have the American accent, low key. The American accent. Yeah. I actually had someone say to me recently. I guess they just saw me and they're like, "You you don't look the way you speak." We got into conversation and they're like, "I thought you'd have like a Toronto accent or something. You like speak a little." Maybe because I knew you before, like, the long hair, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know me for a minute, but I don't think I look that, like, I don't look hood. No, don't you don't. You don't. I'm, I'm walking with, like, a camera in my hands. So. Yeah, yeah, that's facts. Yeah. But I think it's whenever somebody changes their hairstyle, that's when yeah. it changes, bro. <laughs> I, I had no style. I was bald all my life. Yeah, for a long time, you had, like, the short fade. Yeah. And then that jet is a way different jet from now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, 100%. I feel like hair holds power. Um, yeah. For some reason, the longer my hair got, either it was confidence or it was just like some form of energy in it. Yo, okay, I have a like, theory for you about okay, that though. Okay, okay. So listen, so they actually did a study, I think yeah. it's in the US military, where they took two Aboriginal people, right? right? They brought them on because they thought they could use their hunting skills that uh -huh. they use naturally right. to help in the war. Okay, so they were gonna kind of take their knowledge and- Yeah, use kind of like their it. skills, right? So they did a test like, Wait, how come how come they can't track as well, right? Yeah. They weren't tracking as well. And they realized, oh, it's because they buzz their hair off. So supposedly yeah, yeah, they yeah. get their senses from their hair. It makes sense, man. Everyone <laughs> bag this viewers. Look at Carlos and I, bro. We grew our hair and then and more we creative. did better for ourselves. Not even more creative. I feel like we just had the power to to go and do it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, but I've had this conversation hella times. It's like a natural sense. For so, some reason, yeah. So what they did, right? They did a test. They buzzed off one guy's hair no and they way. kept the other guy's hair long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And they sent both of them to do a mission. Whoa. The w no, no, no. This is what they did. <laughs> they sent both of them and went to go hunt them. You hunt went to them? go find them, right? Okay, okay. So the one with the long hair, yeah, they couldn't find. But the one with the short hair, they were able to find right away. That's crazy. I'd like to see them do that like more than once just to see. I mean, I believe it 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's but yo, because be maybe there is some science. If you think about it, yeah. like in the animal kingdom, the whiskers. Yeah. Because the hair kind of holds a sense, no? Yeah, it does. I mean, whisker, yeah. Because the, even the in vibrations cats, right? like hit the whiskers on the cat, same way it might do it Yo, for us. Who might knows? be. Big conspiracy moment, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I haven't thought too deep into it. I it's think just, it's true. I yeah. personally think it's true. Just because you believe in vibrations, right? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Have you seen those um when they have like the table and they put the sand on it? Oh, the table with the sand where it like it vibrates and it makes a shape. Yeah, you okay, seen that yeah. shit? I've seen those, but I don't understand the mechanisms behind it. So they would play like a frequency, whether it be yeah. four thirty, whatever. Oh. You know those ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would automatically create like geometric patterns within the table. Yeah, and you can see it like form. Like what the hell? It's almost as yeah. if it's trying to send a message. I feel like I saw a time lapse of one in like near someone's window, and it was the most like mesmerizing. It's crazy. Ever. I feel like it's also because we associate things like that with natural phenomenons like the desert yeah it's almost generative the way the sand flows with the wind it's like you're never gonna look at a spot and find the same spot no that's so true step away mm -hmm. even in even in just like snow like yeah. snowflakes yo wh what's that term snowflake what does that mean snowflake for what you know how people say like oh you're such a snowflake what you're does that mean you a snowflake i feel like it means you're soft <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call means? you a snowflake? No, no, I'm not saying they call me a snowflake, but I heard that term before. I've heard it used like if you're more liberal, not that it's a bad thing, but yeah. like I guess politically it's been used multiple times. <laughs> they call you soft. Like yeah, stupid. I think does it have something to do with being unique? Because snowflakes are unique, right? That's a good way of spinning it. Honestly, that's that's a positive way of spinning it. I don't know about unique. I think it's just because, you know, they kind of hit the surface and melt. <laughs> so it's like kind of one and done you're a snowflake yeah, yeah yeah you know that um i think it was a quote mm -hmm. it's like the jack of all trades but master none yeah and for someone like you 
like i feel we're kind of the same in a sense like we yeah. like to dive into different categories or yeah, different yeah, kind yeah. of because you can't really title what is jet you can't really title jet as one thing that's what i've been thinking more recently because even i had a clothing brand i still do but i barely kind of keep up with it at the moment mm-hmm. and then i moved kind of into photography but i feel like both of those terms don't really it's sit, yeah right? would you call yourself a photographer because i don't think nah, one yeah. thing i like came up with recently is zeitgeist archivist mm. um what's zeitgeist zeitgeist is like the the mood or the feel of a moment wow. um or a time in history right yeah so archivist obviously i'm archiving these things uh photographically mm-hmm. so i feel like i'm just photographing the moment i'm not necessarily looking to make some cool advertisement or you know shoot something planned everything i shoot is like in the moment won't happen again mm. that's one title i wouldn't say i'm a, a jack of all trades and master of none like no I, but hold on yeah, that yeah. that quote though jack of all trades master of none it actually extends. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's all I've heard. Really? You didn't know yeah, that? No, no. I got so, the period at the end. Because it sounds like a diss, right? It sounds yeah. like a diss. Like, people say that when, like, oh, really? you, you didn't. Yeah. Some people yeah. say that, oh, like, you know all this, this shit, but you're not a master, right? Yeah. But okay. the true quote is, jack of all trades, mm-hmm. master of none. It extends. Into? It says, but oftentimes better than a master of one. That's very that is absolutely true, though. It's I mean, so true, right? I think even uh, even on the uh, topic of mindset, the way I saw it is like jack of all trades, master of none is kind of like you're, you're dipping your toes into all these different areas and you're succeeding at them. Yeah. Why Just is that a bad you're, thing? Yeah, right? if you're not a master at something. Doesn't mean you're bad. Mm-hmm. To be a master takes like not only excellence, but the perception of others that you're excellent at it, I guess. Yo, you know? that's deep. That's yeah, a deal. I guess so. <laughs> no, because that's so true. Because what would you consider yourself a master is only to others, right? Yeah. Because how do you consider yourself a master if there's no one to tell you you're not? I don't even think masters should consider themselves masters. And most times they don't. Yeah. Like you think of a monk. This guy can hold his breath for 30 minutes, like mm. break trees down with his bare hands. They're very, very humble. Yeah. That's so true. We you- look at it as mastery. They see it as like another day to day. Yeah. Even in martial arts. Yeah. Just like anybody that can whoop your ass, like they don't show it. Yeah. I think true mastery of like whooping ass though, even in fighting is like making it look clean. Yeah. Showing that foundation, right? You can have someone like um Israel Adesanya. It is Israel Adesanya. He's nice with it. I'm thinking of more of a brutal approach, but even oh. um Sean O'Malley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like clunky, but he does the job. No, he man. does so. he, he does, does the yeah. job. It's like so brutalist. It's like beautiful, but also it looks rough around the edges, you know. Oh yeah, even um, you know, Nate Diaz. Yeah. Nick Diaz. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, they're like so they they look so unathletic. Yeah. But they can fight. You know they me? pull up the stock and slap, man. They can fight, but they look like so sloppy and shit. Like yeah. they don't look if you see them on the street, they don't look like a, a fighter. You most know? fighters don't, man. Tyson Fury. Yeah, Tyson Fury does not look like he has more stamina. <laughs> Better than me, but he's like ten times the size, right? And he Huge. fucking beat up Deontay Wilder like I that. I saw bro. that it's live. Crazy. There was um an event I was recently at. Shout out Henry. He runs these uh, Z Night events, mm-hmm. and so the event was going on in one room, and in the other room was the the Fury versus Wilder. Oh, fight. weird. <laughs> so I was kind of just jumping between both. You know, I'd hear something crazy go down in the crowd. I'd run yeah. over with my camera, <laughs> snap, 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 then run back. But, yeah, yeah, man. But when it comes to like. I guess a archetype of a person. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's certain things you see in people and then you want to categorize them right away. You know what I mean? Why do you think that is? Mm, uh, I feel like everyone is kind of just taking life at face value until you dig into it. So let's say I see you for the first time. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that you're doing what you're doing, right? For people that don't know you, you know what I think. You dress like very like... um, cottage core <laughs> i get you yeah, yeah yeah but you got the chain on as well it's like it's hard to judge you you know mm-hmm. i don't know i i feel like it's it never hurts to ask someone and just say what's up mm-hmm. and find out so do you think it's a disadvantage or an advantage to look a little bit less out of your archetype i guess less out of your archetype like what would an archetype for me be i guess one archetype is like the artsy person yeah or i guess the more like conservative person like yeah. there's different types of people right yeah you have the outgoing you have the like keep to themselves low key right. right and do you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage to to like take on other traits of something else um i mean taking on other traits is a whole different story but just being 
just being viewed as you are, mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of a disadvantage. Yeah. That sometimes even ties in with racism and prejudice, right? Yeah, I get you. There's that whole little, like, I'm, I'm only half black, mm-hmm. but in the eyes of others, I'm black, mm-hmm. right? No matter what else I'm mixed with. So you could have people that don't see color, you know, they're just not, you know, they're not racist. And then yeah. you have other people who look at me and they'll automatically assume, like what I said at the beginning of the episode, that I sound hood. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So I think it's a, it could be both. It's kind of a, a double-edged sword in that case. Because what do you think is easier to sell, though? To sell? Because low-key, what's easier to sell is that stereotype. Because people want to be fed that stereotype. And I yeah. think the market doesn't like the different. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, now that what do you we, think? We're, we're in this digital age where media presence ties in with everything. Yeah. So let's say my hair mm-hmm. he talks about growing it. I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to keep that kind of bull afro. Yeah. Just because it's my image now. Mm-hmm. Uh, when people see the back of my head, they'll know it's me before I turn around. If they know me, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm keeping this image. It's not something that I'm forcing on myself. I just, I like it and I've been recognized and it's you. as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes your staple. It becomes like kind of your trademark. Yeah even tattoos i mean <laughs> with yeah this field on my arm <laughs> i was at an event and i never have pictures of myself like mm-hmm. very rarely am i on camera i'm always behind the camera yeah but my arm was in one of the shots so <laughs> they're just sending it to me they're like bro i didn't even see you there yeah. but they see my arm right so mm-hmm. i guess it's building an image you know staying consistent with the look but that's when it benefits you when when do you think something becomes iconic bro because you know how when you yeah. see something and automatically it just seems iconic even yeah. though you only seen it the first time the first time i don't know Oh, I feel like it takes me a lot of times to see something iconic. Really? Unless yeah. it's on someone that, who's iconic. Mm. Oh, oh like, I feel that then. Yeah. Because I think it, it takes like a, a certain person or it takes a certain like message to be iconic, right? Yeah. What would you consider iconic? Bro, even just like sometimes a drawing. A like drawing. Loki, a stick man could be iconic, you know? It, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. To me, to it me. It depends. It depends. Like there's there's certain things that even tie in with the media presence. Um, having celebrities like, let's say Kanye held up a stick man. Yeah. Yeah. That would be iconic. No, in that's my facts. Books. That's facts. Yeah. I wouldn't know what the fuck it is, but it's iconic for mm-hmm. some reason because an icon is holding it, right? I don't know. Oh, maybe that's what it is then. So anybody that does have that, I guess, stature or that presence in media, yeah. anything they do becomes iconic. Well, you can boost it. I mean, some people use it for evil. Oh, yeah. Um, and say people, even in the NFT scene, no hate on Gary V, but he's using his presence to kind of push something that mm-hmm. isn't worth what it's being sold as. Word. Right? You think you think Gary V? Wait, yeah, is, is the NFT market doing really well right now? Is it? Yeah, I, I feel like media is kind of uh, saying it's dead, saying nothing's saying going it's on. Saying it's dead. But it's because the media missed their chance to get in on it super early, right? Word, I feel like they're yeah. kind of butthurt about it, pushing people away. Also, mm. while they like claim that digital real estate, right? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Yo, we talked about NFTs like last episode and yeah. in those few months that passed, yeah. it's blown the fuck up. It has. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people know about NFTs, but still like I think 1% of uh, internet users know about NFTs. The rest are still either uneducated or they've never heard of them. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy to me. What do you think the future is for it, though? Do you think it's going to be commonplace? Or? Uh, yeah, I definitely think it will be commonplace. I mean, NFTs are just non-fungible tokens. Doesn't mean art specifically. Um, yeah. Stuff like tickets. We have Eventbrite right now, which mm-hmm. is like a, a company that um, sells digital tickets. That is basically an NFT. Yeah, Without honestly? blockchain technology. Yeah. We've been using these principles um, of technology for so long but they're only being really applied and appreciated now along with the blockchain technology. Yeah. You know what's crazy, bro? Because I've seen, they already started doing like Marvel NFTs, yeah. Star Wars, and like, those are the real collectibles. Nobody even wants to collect physical anymore. It's weird. Yeah, well, it's not that they don't want to collect physical, but it's so much easier to collect something that isn't tangible. Yeah. It doesn't take up space. Mm-hmm. You have shoes on the wall. You know, as you add stuff to your table, you lose space. Which With yeah. digital collectibles... Um, it's in the cloud you're not losing any space and you can rotate through them at any time yeah that's so true that's a really good way to think of it because in my room I do want to have like a huge collection but then I look at it like I don't have the space for it and it's not practical right it's not practical but if you have let's say a digital world yeah and then I have a condo that's in the VR set you know what I mean then it's a whole different story yeah you know what that's called what the metaverse Oh, I heard of that. So they're building this thing called the metaverse. Yeah. Basically going to tie NFTs and VR, virtual reality, 
mm-hmm. into one. Are you in it? Already? In the metaverse? I mean, I've joined things like Decentraland. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are like uh, more digital platforms, but they're not, uh, they haven't implemented VR yet, oh. to my knowledge. Yeah. Uh, so yes, technically I'm in the metaverse, but it's not what the metaverse will be in a couple of years or let's mm-hmm. say 10 years. How do you think we can get ahead of it, yo? Because I know, I yeah. know it's going to be a thing. <laughs> Yeah. But I don't know how I can get my foot in the door. Or like, how can I make something of it? Yeah, I'd say behind the scenes, I have my foot in the door. I'm yeah. working on something that I could definitely oh, yeah. <laughs> involve you in, for mm-hmm. sure. For anyone that's just watching, if you want to get your foot in the door, I'd say first thing, like, dip your toes in the water. Feel it out. Yeah. You got to understand this stuff when it comes out. When you when you start a game for the first time or a sport, you're not going to know how to play it until you've done it a couple of times, right? So get familiar before you're forced to be familiar with it. Oh, yeah, that's so true. I think that's going to give you the head start in any situation. Because if, if you're too late, then like, and the waves already move, yeah. you're going to be spending more money than, you know, more money, more time learning. I mean, that's the thing with anything in life. If you join something while it's not popular, mm-hmm. while it's like not as functional as it will be in the future, you already have the upper hand. Yeah. You see it grow. You see the foundation, you know, build into what it is when the mainstream is forced to join in. Yeah. Because they don't want to miss out. You think it's going to be like ready player one type shit? Because uh, you know, so. <laughs> take, in, take in Ready Player One in the movie. Yeah, the whole society, like mm-hmm. the world, played that game. Feel me? I feel like that's what it's gonna be. Maybe not in in the scale where, where people are giving up their jobs and you know living inside. Unless mm-hmm. you're able to make some form of like financial, you know, cash flow. Yeah, that way. But I feel like eventually it will be. Maybe a hundred years into the future, though. Maybe because here's my theory, right? Yeah, my theory is that we're going to end up destroying the earth. Mm -hmm. Like all of the green dead, like all of our nature dead. You know what I mean? Our world will end up being a wasteland if we don't take care of it. And then we're just going to move on to a next world. But the next world may not be Mars, Venus. You know what I mean? It's going to be digital. It's going to be digital. Bro, listen. So I was looking into Neuralink recently Mm -hmm. because I just, I I heard about this monkey playing Pong with its mind. Oh, I saw that video. I was like, I need to learn more about this. So (laughs) did some research. uh, It's called Neuralink. It's a project that Elon Musk is working on. It's going to be this like coin sized piece of technology that you put into your skull. In your brain, right? In your brain. And what it does is it uh, releases like hair sized wires. Um, It'll read. Oh, these shit. little electric waves that um, your brain sends to your limbs or mm-hmm. it basically helps the human body run as it is. So with this piece of technology, people that are blind will be able to see That's people crazy. that are paralyzed will be able to move and you'll be able to save memories, save feelings, yeah. everything. It's, it's going to be crazy. But I think once that technology releases, if it goes hand in hand with the metaverse, yo, <laughs> we won't have to move off Earth, you know? Yeah. Because even if we're living in just a chair, I mean, we have this little piece of technology that's sending, you know, electric waves to our brain telling us that we're not hungry. We're not thirsty. Mm. We're perfectly fine, right? Yo. Loki, did you watch Naruto or no? No, I haven't. I, I watched like three episodes. Do you know what the infinite Tsukiyomi is or not? No. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> okay. it. You don't have to worry about it. But pretty much what it is, is yeah. like they all get put into a dream state, kind yeah. of like a simulation. Right. But the dream state, it was against their own will. Okay. Yeah. It was against their own will. But what it was, it was paradise. Right. Because he thought the world wasn't worth living in. Okay. Right? So I could see that being a real thing in this world. Yeah. Because eventually, look look how it's going. Like, there's there's talks of war. Yeah. There's sickness, disease. Like, people are hurt. People are, like, yeah. suffering. Right? And we want to escape. Yeah. What's the best way to escape? But if Without you escape, escaping. you don't want to escape by yourself. Mm-hmm. You want to take everybody with you, you know? Yeah. Because what's the point if you just escape by if yourself? You just by yourself. Yeah. Well, even, you know, if you're if you're saving memories, that means you can relive them. Mm. Like Joe Rogan and Elon Musk were speaking to each other. And there's, uh, Joe Rogan asked, what's the percentage that, uh, what's, what's the chance that this moment right here isn't just recorded and replayed? Yo. You know? Yeah. And I guess Elon kind of struggled with it. He's like, maybe when the technology comes out, the, the probability will be higher. But for now, it's it's hard to say. So do you think like we can actually go into our past? Yeah. Already with that technology. That would be crazy. Already with that technology? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, um, when technology is made, they're going to speak of the, the most grandiose things they can do with it. Yeah. I don't know if this is possible. Mm-hmm. I'm sure obviously. they don't know if it's possible. <laughs> but in, in a perfect world where that does happen, yeah. This could be just a replay of, of this moment, of this life, right? Mm-hmm. So my question to you. Yeah. If we're headed there already, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think we're in it right now? <laughs> <laughs> Do I think we're in it? Because look, 
Because, like, if we're going to get there, mm-hmm. who's to tell us, like, we're not in it already? We're not already there. But yeah, I feel like we are in a simulation, honestly. You think for sure, like, this is all not what it seems? Not that it's not what it seems. I feel like it's exactly what it seems. But simulation can be anything from computer programming, these random worlds, yeah. to something as small as, you know, having ants in a pot. <laughs> yeah. And then building their own civilization. That's technically a simulation. Yeah. Okay, you're that simulating is, yeah. an environment. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't believe it's this... Um, you know, conspired simulation. I believe it's just face value. Something was put on this earth and it's mm. grown into what it is. Yeah, because honestly, even looking at a zoo, right? Yeah, it's a simulation. That's a simulation for them and we put them in that. Yeah, and we're a simulated environment. So it's truly a simulation inside of a simulation down to, you know, the the minerals that you put in your soil. Mm. Because then you're simulating the environment for them as well. Yeah. You know what's it always boggles my mind is like yeah. human life. Like how we lived before naturally compared yeah. to like what we're living in now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because before what we did was hunt, gather food. Yeah. Let's say like talked around the campfire, whatever it was yeah, back yeah, yeah. then, right? Very simple. And then now it's like hop on social media. Let me share my posts. Let me share my ideas. Let me share my thoughts. Yeah. And I feel like life is always changing. But do you ever think we're going to miss do you think our body can adapt to our change or are we always looking back towards that kind of neanderthal by the campfire let me share my stories like that yeah i'd say i have two answers to that question Mm -hmm. first one being i think social media has completely changed and ruined society as it is (laughs) honestly i think as as much as it looks good on the outside i feel like there have been a lot of issues in either my life or the life of others that are completely caused by social media you know Mm, yeah Maybe you wouldn't have had an issue with a person. Maybe you wouldn't have done X, Y, Z if it wasn't for a phone. Yeah. Right? But you got to think about it. Back in the day, there was really no gauge of, you know, wrong or right mm-hmm. if you didn't have proof of it on social media. So it's like, you know, every step we take forward is like almost a step backwards. It looks great, but it's kind of harmful. Yeah. And especially with like mental health, too. Yeah. Because we're not really supposed to be on our phones like that. No. Naturally naturally yeah. like maybe mentally now our mindset has changed yeah. but our body can't take that yeah well for the second answer i'd say that you know you you mentioned that we're hunters gatherers mm-hmm. we still have all of those principles we just receive them in a different way now whereas back in the day we'd hunt for food yeah and we'd get the validation of our family mm-hmm. now we hunt for that perfect fo- like photo opportunity we hunt <laughs> for that perfect selfie yeah that perfect podcast clip And we post it in order to gather validation from not only, you know, the people who's important to, but just people who see it, Yo, that's so So, true. Yeah, we we have all the same principles. It's just evolved. Damn, that's crazy. (laughs) But yeah, because I feel like no matter what, no matter how we evolve, eventually, we still want to go back to that natural setting because we kind of still have our animal instincts in a sense yeah right? we're, we're all primal yeah we break it down to its core we have primal instincts i mean tinder yeah and social media that's a primal instinct and now it's just been made easier you have a menu mm-hmm. you can swipe through but it's the same instinct same yeah principles. that is so true it is the same instinct and even i think the instincts that they take advantage of the most is stuff like sex Absolutely, it's stuff yeah. like the things that that trigger us to buy stuff yeah yeah, yeah. they use that bro <laughs> i've been noticing that a lot about myself recently I, i'm not bad with money but when mm. i see something that i love i need to have it yeah so i'm gonna spend that 50 to 100 on something like what, what did i see recently i saw a cause fortnite skin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't even play fortnite <laughs> I don't even play Fortnite, but I was looking at him like, that's kind of hard. I, like, I really want to buy it, but I felt that like feeling mm-hmm. that like neural, whatever it yeah, was yeah. that set that off. I'm like, I re- I recognized it. I'm like, whoa, bro. I'm telling you, no matter what, if it's something I really, really want, a hundred dollars doesn't feel like a hundred dollars, man. There's no price, man. You think, you know, with something that's a little if you look at it, you weigh out the, you know, oh, it's a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With something you love and you really want, it's, it's a hundred dollars that I can get back. Yeah. You know, you kind of put it on a pedestal, but it's it's stuff like that where you, you recognize these feelings that these posts give you and they're good at giving it to you now. Mm-hmm. And I think, bro, it's especially those things that mm-hmm. connect to your childhood because we talked about this before. Yeah, yeah, nostalgia, yeah. Nostalgia sells, right? Nostalgia sells. And if you can tap into their childhood or something so personal to mm-hmm. them and kind of get that feeling out, yeah, putting a price tag to your childhood 
bro, it's hard, man. Because childhood is priceless. Yeah, it's it's priceless. It's such a unique experience. So you know, you can you can target a small group of people that love the same thing. Yeah, just by showing them something that they all collectively used to like, right? Mm -hmm. And do you think? Okay, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about NFTs talk to me and kind of even just art, bro. Because you know this already, right? Like, sure. NFTs are low key just for money laundering. Yeah, um, I mean, shout out to the elites, but all of those giant, giant auctions where millions of dollars worth of paintings are sold, you know, truth be told, it's kind of just to, to write off for taxes. Yeah, it's just this write off taxes. Yeah. Because those billionaires, those millionaires that want to make more money, but it's hard for them to move that money without being taxed yeah. like shit 10 percent of a million fuck that's a lot of money you know yeah, man it's a, it's a charitable <laughs> charitable donation and boom that money is back in your account or it's spent on something you actually care about i mm -hmm. guess but yeah nfts a lot of it is money laundering a lot of it is people that are in it for the money yeah but i think the community i'm in right now there's so many dope artists that make art because they make art yeah my collection has grown from zero to like 500 pieces and a couple of months since the last time we spoke about it just because there's so much good genuine art mm -hmm. is that is that because you see a future with it or just because it holds kind of like value to you specifically so some things i buy because i truly like them yeah i don't care about the price i don't care about the the creator's presence and then other pieces i'll buy them because yeah they will go up in price yeah but i'll never buy something that i don't actually like appreciate looking at mm -hmm. because if it doesn't go up in price it's gonna be with me yeah yeah right? i feel you mm -hmm. and you know I, as shaq said if you if you're investing in things that are gonna change the world you're gonna make money a lot faster yeah so if i'm if i'm looking at an artist and i'm like this is some valuable valuable stuff this is something i would see as iconic in the future or mm -hmm. people will then my investment in, in that art is is going to change the world somehow yeah for you're sure. funding this creator to keep putting out amazing content mm -hmm. and it's kind of like giving that wave more strength you know yeah, what i mean absolutely it's kind of like allowing people to see okay i see value in it he sees value in it damn okay maybe this is a real thing we can really yeah. we can really go forward with this movement right yeah but it takes that because a lot of things like someone will have a great idea but if it has no backing fam it's not going nowhere yeah you can't really sell a concept you have to sell um the fact that they're supporters i guess in most cases mm -hmm. i mean even when i started getting into nfts when i first started uploading my work it sat on the marketplace for like three weeks when and crazy enough on my birthday i was like just sitting thinking about like damn my yeah. shit has not sold at all like should i give up on it mm -hmm. and i go and i check my laptop and i've sold out Word. One, guy, one guy collected all of the six pieces that i had oh put shit up. and even messaged me he's like man i can't believe these were here for so yeah? long without being touched but it's like on your birthday too on my birthday too <laughs> it was one of the best birthday gifts like hey. i could ever <laughs> received mind you i sold everything for like maybe thirty dollars total mm -hmm. was not the biggest profit in the world but that like little push of support kind of like set a fire in me to keep working at it yeah which is like a lot of artists were were in my spot or they're currently in the spot i was at mm -hmm. and they're waiting for that one person to like you know yo that's so true man because you know what a lot of people they want to be successful through their passion mm -hmm. but they don't know how to man yeah they don't know how to and it takes kind of that I guess validation or that kind of give for them to be like okay yeah this is a real thing it could be a real thing yeah but they're constantly looking for that where can they find that bro where can you find validation where can you find like i guess your first spark because i think that's what everybody's looking for yeah they're not necessarily looking for overnight success yeah they're not looking for i want to go viral like that yeah they're more or less looking for okay maybe this could be a real thing but i need something to show me it could be a real thing right? i feel like you can't find the spark the spark will find you Word. by continuing to work at it i mean i told you i uploaded six pieces they all sold in the same night but i put them up individually yeah like week after week just waiting for something to happen i was uploading mm -hmm. because i loved it not because i was waiting for someone to buy them right mm -hmm. although it was like a little bit of validation like okay this is worth something um i was truly just uploading them to have like a, a catalog mm. of nfts right that's some deep shit bro <laughs> yeah i mean anything in life you can't you can't really pick your success yeah you can't say okay now <laughs> now i'll be rich now i'll be famous mm -hmm. now i'll be this now i'll be that like it's gonna find you yeah if you're meant for it oh word so you think yeah. do you think everything happens for a reason then do you think um the steps are taking place because it was supposed to happen or is it just your your reaction to it what do you think i think everything happens for a reason everything happens for a reason right um obviously there's work that goes into it with manifesting yeah um you can manifest something but if you're not working 
alongside, it's not going to happen. That's so true. Like with even the billboard um, that I had in Times Square. That's crazy. Talk about that, bro. bro this is something <laughs> I've only spoken to a few people about. The, the part I'm going to tell you yeah. is that I feel like I low-key manifested it. Really? Yeah? Because um, I was going through a rough time and I was I went downtown to kind of like clear my mind, just walk around, see the city and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I was at Dundas Square. And I saw the billboards. And yeah. I'm like, yo, I can't imagine like having my work on something like that. Mm-hmm. So I took a video and I'm like, I'm going to go home and like, um, what's it called? Like Photoshop it on just to see what it would look like. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it on my wall and like try to manifest with it. Mm-hmm. I took the video, but I never edited anything onto it. I kind of right. just left it alone. And then two weeks later, I'm at a video shoot for Z Supreme uh, with DMTV. Yeah. And bro, he connected me and I got my work on a, on a billboard. Like two weeks after that moment. In Times Square. In Times Square. That's crazy. And it was like I stumbled on the video on my phone and I forgot I even wanted it that bad. Like mm-hmm. to the point where I was recording it like a dumbass. Like <laughs> That's insane. Hoping. Bro. That's crazy. Because yo, honestly, I've been reading a lot more books on manifestation. And the yeah. more I read about it, the more I think it's more powerful. And I see certain ways that made sense to me Yeah. now. Right? So one of the ways you can manifest is actually not trying. Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't so, know that, but that sounds So awesome. listen, listen. You have an intention, mm-hmm. but if you work too hard at an intention, sometimes yeah. you're getting in the way of yourself. Mm-hmm. You get that? Yeah. Cuz yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. sometimes you're doing things to where it's like it becomes a stress and then it doesn't feel natural, mm-hmm. right? So I read this in a book. This is in The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. Okay. I think it's by something uh Deepak Chopra. That was a yeah. art, that was an author, right? Okay. So he said this quote, right? Birds, Mm -hmm. they don't try to fly. They just fly. And fish, they don't try to swim. They just swim. They just swim. So my question to you, what do humans do? We walk. Everything walks, bro. Everything walks. Uh, Fish don't walk. (laughs) No, but like like bears (laughs) walk, dogs walk. What do we do in what sense? Naturally? Naturally. Like we don't try to do, we do. Think, breathe. Close, close. Think, Think is close. Think is close. We manifest. We hope. Exactly. Exactly. We take our internal ideas Mm -hmm. and we manifest it into the physical. No other creature in the world can do that. Yeah. Because if you think about it, everything else, it kind of has their own nature. Let's say a squirrel manifest its its house not nah, all squirrels yeah. are doing that same shit right i mean all birds are making the same nest yeah. but humans we don't really build the same houses yeah we don't get into the same kind of art we get into you know yeah exactly i we're, we're unique because we have a conscience exactly we have aspirations whereas a squirrel's aspirations they, like they are aspirations mm. <laughs> <laughs> they're just not on the same scale i didn't want to <laughs> yeah. they don't, don't want to no squirrels, they don't right? hate, they don't squirrels. <laughs> if you got if you guys are watching this right now i respect you <laughs> never had a problem with squirrels but yeah their aspirations are much smaller and mm. they just want that that next acorn but maybe we want to build a, a business off of selling acorns right yeah exactly it's that complexity that we have mm-hmm. so humans we have that special gift to take what we want to do mm-hmm. and create it yeah. And we all have the we all have the power to do it, fam. I feel like not enough people hear that. Yeah. Because we don't see it enough. Like a lot of people they fall into the system, the quote unquote the system, mm-hmm. right? Follow the same formula, go to school, get a job, have a small family. Yeah. Sure, a lot of people find happiness through that. Great, right? Yeah. But I know a lot of people that do fall into depression through their job or what they're in. Mm-hmm. Damn, it's because they didn't follow their passion. Yeah. Right? I mean, a lot of the time when uh, people are are moving on to their passing state, when they get very old, the one thing that they all say is that they wish they did this and that. Mm -hmm. Everyone says they don't have regrets, but on the opposite end of that, you have things you wish you did. Yeah. You don't necessarily regret not doing it. You just, you know, if you had the chance, you would try it out. So I feel like that's kind of my push for everything. Mm -hmm. I kind of weigh out, you know, the fear of missing out versus the happiness I feel like thinking about having it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So if I'm more excited than I am scared, or if, you know, you put the two together, you're more motivated to just go and get it, right? Yeah, that's so true. Okay, let me ask you a question. Would you rather start off life rich mm-hmm. or how you did how you did right now? <laughs> I definitely was not born rich. Yeah. Uh, I mean, mind you, I was not born poor either. I, I grew up with two parents, you know, mm-hmm. had clothes, food, everything I needed. So I feel like I, I was set off at a good spot mm-hmm. um and i would not change it for anything because it's it's made me who i am yeah it's made you who you are right yeah so i think that's a super deep question because 
I, I was watching a podcast with Dan Bozerian, right? Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how once you reach the top and you've done all this extraordinary shit, mm-hmm. everything else feels normal to you. Right. Right? So there's only so high you can reach. Mm-hmm. And then everything else feels depressing. Yeah. Because, for example, if me or you hop in a Lambo, it's going to be like an event. That's a treat, bro. That's exactly. A treat. Yeah. It's going to be an event. Like, we don't do that shit. Mm-hmm. But to somebody that's super rich, they drive in a Lambo every day. Yeah. They're just going to feel like that's a Honda Civic. Yeah. Right? If, if you don't work for something. I mean, let me rephrase. Yeah. There's a difference between people who have busted their ass for something versus people who are born into it. Mm. like even money um some people don't have a respect for the nine to five hustle yeah Mm. like i have a job i enjoy it but to a rich person they're looking at it like oh why would you work something like that why would you put your time into something like that Mm -hmm. but i'm looking to build so when i'm at that point where i've achieved my goals i can look back at all the effort i put in and know that it was you know worth my time oh yeah 100 percent, bro if you're born into it you don't have that choice yeah like there are people that i've met that even you know with the billboard they get the billboard so easily Mm-hmm. That it's like I'm hyped about it. I, I'm hyped about it. And they're like, oh yeah, congrats, bro. Like that's Yeah. Cool. There's they some people they don't feel excitement. Mm-hmm. And it's and sad to see. That's what's sad, bro. Cause one of my biggest fears is like reaching my goal mm-hmm. and not being satisfied. Yeah. Cause sometimes I think just the grind itself is satisfied is satisfying. Right. Just the grind itself is satisfying. Mm-hmm. Just like making these small goals, accomplishing small goals. Yeah. It feels amazing, but I feel like once you finish that big, whatever it was, you know what I mean? That big yeah. goal in your head, that whatever it was. It's like, what's next? It's like, what's next? And then yeah. you fall into that pit of like, okay, what else can I do in life? And that's why it's scary because you see people, very rich people, mm-hmm. like, look, RIP Anthony Bourdain. Mm-hmm. People like that, man. Like, they have extraordinary lives doing crazy things we would never have access to. Yeah. Or maybe not right now. Yeah. But, fam, it's sad to see, like, their life go down like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's literally what we said. There's a finish line. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, at least for myself, I never set a clear, once I get there, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Once I get there, I'm going to enjoy being there. Mm-hmm. But there's always another goal. You know, jo- job not done. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> job not done, man. It never is. And that's even now selling NFTs, um, going to events, doing photography. Mm-hmm. As soon as the night's over, it's not over. I'm happy to go home and edit and continue doing what i do and once i'm done editing yeah it's not like okay well there's my job Mm -hmm. i'm done i'm waiting for the next moment i get to shoot so i feel like you just have to be excited to live honestly yeah like you know live to die die to live yeah (laughs) exactly we we talk about that before i think i think we said something similar to that yeah Yeah. crazy quote shout out jude for saying that (laughs) yo but one thing i heard right Mm -hmm. a lot of these billionaires all a lot of these rich people that done it all Mm mm-hmm you know what they do to try to step back a step? What? They do Porsche? No. They take mushrooms to feel uh, like everything's brand new yet. Really? They take psychedelics. Well, you can never have like exact experience every time you do them, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it's like a new world. It is like a new world. A second plane, right? Right? Because imagine for them, because from what I know, when you do take mushrooms, everything feels brand new to you. Mm-hmm. It feels like you're a child again, or it feels like yeah, the experience is something you know it's 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 not regular it's not regular life yeah so i think those people those very rich people they want to take a step back and then try to see what life is about they do that yeah well if you try to escape the physical with substances and stuff i mean at a certain point if you're that rich and bored of everything what's what else is there to do Mm -hmm. there's even like bad things that they do you know life becomes so boring that they need to spice it up by doing like gruesome activities right oh yeah that's that's like the dark side of it bro the dark side of it yeah like the elites that's the dark shit (laughs) could be conspiracy but i do believe that once you get to a point where you're like you're at the ceiling there's no breaking through Mm -hmm. you kind of just go back and and cause havoc i guess but it's all like protected Mm -hmm. yeah do you think do you think uh, i don't know if you could get into like the dark dark stuff but yeah okay Going to like secret societies and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Do you think they manipulate, quote unquote, because that's what, that's what conspiracy is. These yeah. secret societies manipulate us. Do you right. think they manipulate us mm-hmm. because they want more power or because they feel jealous of what we are? Jealous? Oh, <laughs> Which button do I press for that one? Because <laughs> think about it. Think Bro. about it, right? Think about this. This is hey. some deep shit. If you're someone that's like a billionaire, right? Mm-hmm. You've accomplished everything in your life, right? Yeah. And you see somebody with way less than you, but happy as shit. Yeah. They're way happier than you, but you have it all. Mm-hmm. How are you going to feel, fam? You're right. Could be jealousy. 
could be i mean on on a positive scale you could be happy for them like Mm -hmm. a lot of the time i see people like smiling and happy and i'll actually be happy just viewing it right yeah so i don't know i mean i'm not i'm not in a secret society (laughs) i can never say but yeah because i i I think about that right because look look imagine put yourself in that Mm -hmm. position you put your blood sweat tears to get where you are and you're still not happy yeah when you see somebody else that's way happier than you that didn't do those things fam it's gonna hurt low-key that shit would hurt yeah i feel like my victories lay in like not materialistic things Mm -hmm. though right like obviously if i if i you know get to where i want to be yeah i will be there but there's so many other things i want to find a wife want to like have a family Mm -hmm. i feel like that's what's more fulfilling than that's what holds it down for you driving a Mm -hmm. driving a million dollar car and having a multi-mansion right yeah so maybe it's just about where people place their priorities Mm -hmm. that decides they're happy but i think what sucks is the agenda that they push is that you need those things to survive or like you need that to feel happy because all the commercials to sell products fam that's what they got to do honestly yeah i mean that's another way social media is ruining things yeah a lot of these rappers like they'll rent out a chain go post it on their story flexing it blah blah blah. they look cool mind you Mm -hmm. but then you have these kids that want to do what they do yeah they're looking at these rappers they're forcing themselves into these like unhealthy work habits or thinking that that's happiness yeah that swinging in a chain around is mm-hmm. happiness but i mean those rappers they're sad some of them are they 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 return that chain and they go back and think about you know was it worth it right? was it worth it or this doesn't bring me joy yeah you know and i think what i love the most is when people break that pattern man because yeah. i don't think i don't think we see it enough where we see that pattern broke or we yeah. see that formula kind of like shattered, like we can do it a different way. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. it's almost as if it's like the secret, you know, the secret to happiness. It's no, it's like, it's like the secret that people don't want to tell you because they need those people in place yeah. for them to flourish. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a way that secret societies manipulate us. Secret society could just be a, a music label mm. forcing this image on someone. I think even with Uzi, he tried to get out of his contract by doing some satanic shit on stage. Right? Oh, yeah. He did that like devil performance. Yeah. And obviously, I don't have contact with the label, but where it was, they were kind of upset. And then they saw how the fans reacted. Mm. And he gained more popularity. Oh, shit. And so they're like, yo, keep doing this. So wait, wait, you're telling me that he did that to try and get out of his contract, get out of his contract with his label? I don't know. A hundred percent. That's just conspiracy. Obviously, that he did it to get out of his label, and yeah. it kind of backfired on him because he got more popular. People love. Damn, the that's part. crazy. Yeah, that makes sense though. That makes sense because they would want whatever it is. Mm-hmm. They see a reaction to it. More of that. More of that. More of that. Yeah, you know more what I mean? Of it. Even when it's like that's that's literally in their code. Don't do this. Yeah. If you show them that it works. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> they're gonna keep you in that loop they have you locked down and mm-hmm. they're gonna make you do it more because that's the power they have over you damn that's crazy man yeah that's crazy and i feel i really feel for those artists that they lose kind of their their sense of freedom fam yeah they lose their sense of freedom because i think that's one thing we really have is freedom and mm-hmm. if we don't protect it or we fall into things that hold us down into yeah a box corner you lose your freedom I mean, that's selling your soul and they do it at such a young age. Yeah. You don't have to be in contact with the devil to sell it, to sell your soul. It's simply, you know, signing away your human, you know, just human lifestyle for, for the rules of someone else. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what social media does, man. Bring you back to social media. Right. Yeah. And bro, I heard this crazy quote, right? Okay, okay. Listen to this. Ram. This is fucked. But they said, if everything is free, mm-hmm. that means you're the product. Whoa, hold up. That's true. So think about it. So yeah. whatever is free, mm-hmm. what services are free, that means you are the product. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I mean, you're the one making the products as well. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, mm-hmm. all these social medias, they're free platforms. And they have like these um, kind of digital businesses inside of them. But yeah. Facebook didn't make that. Mm-hmm. You have Wico Studios running through Instagram. Yeah. You're the product and the creator. Exactly. And, so, yeah. bro, in a sense... If we're the product, mm-hmm. who's behind the creators? <laughs> Listen, the creators <laughs> uh-huh. can say what the product will be. Yeah. And they can push us to be something else that we're not. Yeah, they can. I mean, <laughs> the thing is with people in such high power, the new like, you know, I guess back in the day they'd hire a hitman to take someone out that's saying something crazy. Yeah. Now 
they just released some posts. <laughs> yeah. Chill. Chill. You know? <laughs> Yo, God, no one go for Carlos, yeah. but he's a good guy. <laughs> um, but, you know, back in the day, recap, you send out a hit, man. Now you can have a digital assassin. Mm-hmm. Someone who releases information, a stupid video of you at oh, a party. Oh, shit. Um, people can even make fake allegations on you, and now you're socially killed. Yo, that's fucked. I just thought of that. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's digital murder. You don't have to kill someone's physical anymore because holy shit, media means everything. Media means everything. You can judge someone completely based off how people perceive them online. That's fucked. Digital yeah. hitman. That's what happens. That's crazy. I no, because because that that could really be a thing. Because it is. It definitely is a thing. You know how many allegations you see and you're like, wow, what? It, like, how did this happen? Damn. You know, um, not even allegations alone. Obviously, I don't want to invalidate. Yeah, anything, yeah, of course. But stuff like, oh, uh, Justin Bieber stubbed his toe at a restaurant and didn't say sorry. Yeah, shit like that, you know? That still kills you to a certain group of people, right? And it's like, who wrote this? Who came up with this? Damn, so that's so messed up shit, bro. Because I'm really thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Fam, we see it all the time. And what's crazy is it's kind of a new thing, right? Because, yeah. like, I guess maybe in the past 10 years, we can yeah. see more celebrity tabloids or whatever yeah in the beginning but now it's all on social media and now it's really easy to be heard yeah i mean it's really easy to hear about the negative shit that happened not only is it easy to be heard it's easy for someone with a platform to take someone down yeah or big them up that's kind of like you you have a voice Mm -hmm. you have a big following so it's like how you use it really impacts you know the world exactly yeah you have enough say to to either give someone a good outlook on life or a bad one Mm -hmm. or a good outlook on a person or a bad one right yeah and that's important bro that's why when you do have these platforms and you do have that responsibility you have to make sure like oh what's the what's the spider-man quote fam with great power comes great responsibility exactly (laughs) (laughs) no but bro with great power comes great responsibility it's true it's true that's like there are these principles in life that again spider-man yeah put out that are so true especially pertaining to now Mm -hmm. You have credibility. We were speaking about this before the podcast. Whatever you post is going to be seen as your opinion, right? Yeah. Whatever you share. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, you got to build that credibility. You can't be sharing stuff you don't like. Exactly. You can't be sharing stuff that might, you know, sway people. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. That's why whenever I post something or you see me on my Instagram and I post like a book on my story. Mm -hmm. Fam, if I posted it on my story, trust me. It means something. It means something. I wouldn't just post anything randomly and I won't just post it just because... It's a trend. Nah. Yeah. Exactly. Nah. It's showing a part of me. Yeah. You know what I mean, if I post something on my story, that's my opinion. That's my kind of way of showing my ideas. You know, Your page is you. That's that's literally just like my personality onto it. It's a Carlos projection. Exactly. Like realistically. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's there's some um, like influencers like Aiden Ross. Yeah. I feel terrible for him. Why? He, he came into the game making these like jokes kind of oh, inappropriate jokes for yeah, the yeah, older yeah. audience and now you know they're funny yeah they're funny, they're funny but now he has this younger group of fans that are going around and like carrying out his personality in like in real life and they're getting in trouble for it right? oh yeah i feel you but it's like he kind of takes the hit for all of that mm. it's not the kids it's him and as much as it was just him being funny it's now kind of taking a turn he's being pressed by people yeah for stuff that he doesn't even <laughs> need to do the who I smoke incident. He's such an eight, like an innocent guy. Yeah, Aiden seems like the nicest dude on earth. Mm-hmm. But he said a couple words from a song, and obviously it was disrespectful. But it wasn't his intention. I know. But when you have a platform like that, when you have a presence like that, everything you say is like you're walking on thin ice. Damn, that's some deep shit. And it's so, it's so tough, man. Yeah. It's so tough because you really what what you, what you want the world to be is what can just be out of your mouth. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like whatever, if you had that power, if you had that influence, if you had those people looking at you, yeah, whatever you say could be the reality. And the thing is with these kids, like if I had any advice to give anyone growing up in the in the age of social media, is the best investment you can make is investing in yourself mm-hmm. by not recording the dumb shit you do. Yeah, not saying stupid things to people in general, but especially when it can be screenshotted. Mm-hmm. You know, just just be responsible on social media. It's something that gets left out of the conversation yeah no honestly it does but the people that grew up in in our time we have dumb videos of us yeah like bro. it or not like <laughs> yeah, it or not so dumb videos to be honest we were kind of the guinea pigs right yeah no that's so true anyone born in the 90s <laughs> 80s 
<laughs> it may be on VHS, but they could break the tape for yeah, us. Fam. No, it's in. It's in the cloud. So now I hope kids that are growing up uh, behind us, even like my younger brother, people, you know, younger than us, I hope they, they grow up with that, that lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope schools start teaching it. Yeah. Because you won't take it seriously when you're a kid. Yeah. Nah. But nah, because it, it, like, like them... We were in their position where it's a brand new frontier. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to find themselves on this platform. It's like, yeah. it's just like trial and error, you know? Yeah. And sometimes the trial isn't exactly what you meant to put out. It might not have even been a trial. Yeah. We were just like, we're the product. We're yeah. giving them results exactly. they didn't even ask for. I mean, anywhere you go in life now, it's, it's going to be recorded. Yeah. Sad thing of it, even at events. That's everything. messed up, man. I hate thinking about that. I hate that thinking everything about that. is on camera. Yeah, even if you steal a a penny off the floor down on the street, like someone could be taking a picture of their mom, and boom, there you are. Yeah, that's messed up, man. Speaking of that, for the people that pressed me last episode because I said that a a dollar was a, a piece of metal. <laughs> All the Americans were tweaking. They're like, this guy's so dumb. He's th he thinks a dollar is a piece of metal. It is, we're no? We're in Canada. It's because they, the, they have the paper ones. Oh, yeah. They were in the comments flaming me, bro. I'm looking at the comments like, oh, let's see what they said. This guy's a dumbass. No, this that makes sense. No, that makes sense because, bro, when I heard that comment, yo, I literally just got it now. When yeah, I heard that yeah. comment before, I didn't understand it. I'm like, why are they, why are they making fun of him? A dollar? Yeah, this it is. A dollar's a piece of metal. Listen to this it is, guy. It is a piece of metal. To us. To us, because we're Canadian, yo. <laughs> you foolish Americans. Just kidding. I love you guys. But yeah, that, that was just something. I, it was on my mind, bro. It ate at me. I was trying to think. I'm like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I was watching back the clip. I'm like, what the, What was wrong? You know what a lot of people said, dude? A uh -huh. lot of people compared you to Moose. No, no, no. Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> Hey, fam, I'm those. gonna I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why, but it is yeah. like you have that vibe, fam. Maybe. But it's a good vibe. Yeah, you know that's what? a good thing. It's weird, but a couple people have said I, I remind them of Adam Sandler and I look like Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. Nah, I they're sure know, bro. Oh shit. Yeah. Adam Sandler. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I should be offended. <laughs> bro, kidding. that's a what? Right. Still, it's the craziest thing. It's not like one person just said it, you know. Maybe they caught me at a Nah, I don't see Adam Sandler, fam. That's Loki Diz, fam. No, nah, I don't see Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. If you ever watch this, I'm taking it as a compliment. <laughs> but Adam Sandler is one I get. Um, Moose from Step Up is something that... Oh, kind of Loki? I heard a couple little times bit, little bit. in person. And then as soon as the episode dropped, I mean, there were a bunch of uh, comparisons. I should have noted them, but... They were all pretty accurate. I think I think the Jesse Eisenberg, I don't know why. I think it's because of the social network. And the hair. Like, you could definitely play him. I don't know why. Yeah? I'd love to play him in, like, a, the social network, uh, some other universe or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like Wait. the Rick and Morty version, <laughs> fucking <laughs> alternate dimension. You, you see the live Rick and Morty is coming out? Is, is that real? I thought it's just, like, a prank. I have no clue. I just brought it up because I know you love Rick and Morty. I, just, I don't know if yeah. it's going to be real. I feel like it's just going to be, like, a... Maybe even just a short episode. It's like the live action version of I don't, it. You think it's a movie? or I have no clue. I, I only watched a couple episodes of Rick and Morty, but oh, they yeah, said yeah. they had um scientists from Back to the Future. Yeah, Back to the Future. Doc the, Brown. Yeah, playing the... I don't know his name. Ray, playing Rick. Playing Rick. <laughs> playing Rick. <laughs> that just shows. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't watch it like that? Nah. I, I, I'm surprised you don't watch it. I don't watch many shows or movies. I just started watching movies. Oh. I like, don't have the attention span. I, I picked up on it. I was like, watch anytime I'd watch a music video or yeah. anything, any video in general, movies, I would always lose my attention at six minutes. Word. For some reason, it's like I'd always check up. When did I t when yeah? did I tap out mentally? And it was always six minutes. So I've been forcing myself to like not look away from things as often, and it's is working. I've six gone through minutes, movies. huh? Yeah, I don't know why my attention span was six minutes. I guess it's like I'm, I'm always jumping from idea to idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing that actually really helped, um, I told you I started working at a dispensary. I bought myself a, a CBD cartridge. Mm -hmm. It's a vaporizer cartridge. So yeah. CBD is good for, you know, anxiety, um, inflammation, muscle pain, this and that. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know how good it was for my mental. Really? I hit, it, I hit it before driving home from work. Yeah. And after 10 minutes, I'm like, well, I didn't have a thought for that whole ride. Really? My mind was clear. It was like not calm. in a scary way. I've just never been so like, like mentally zen. at peace. Damn. Not a single thought. It was just me and the wheel, bro. Wow. And I wasn't fried. I was completely there. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. just, it's weird. But CBD, if you're like me, definitely try CBD. Yo, because I heard there was a study. They mm -hmm. gave babies that were having seizures CBD. Yeah. And it stopped their seizures. It's an incredible 
like substance, man. And it's not psychoactive. CBD isn't psychoactive. Technically, it's psychoactive. If it messes with your mental, it's considered psychoactive. Oh, right. But but it's, not, it doesn't it's, make you high. It doesn't make you. Yeah, high. It, doesn't it doesn't make doesn't you intoxicate high. you. Yeah. Um. But yeah, CBD has worked wonders for Damn, some reason. That's, yeah, it's helped out a lot. I I mean. Yeah, I've gone through a couple movies. I'm going through the Tarantinos right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's your what's your favorite movie so far? Favorite Tarantino? Oh, what's your favorite movie you saw like recently? Before I started watching movies, I would say Moana. Just because it was really trippy. Moana. It was cool. The the music and everything, animation style was cool. Mm -hmm. Um Coraline's always been a favorite. Oh, Coraline's crazy. But after watching the Tarantinos, Django Unchained. Oh yeah. <laughs> such a badass movie. Yeah, yeah. It's such a badass movie. So I love that one. I think I love I love movies where it's just like because all the Tarantino's movies, fam, mm -hmm. is putting a crazy situation and then flipping it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because look, look, look. It's like Taking the slave era, but making the slave the hero. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or taking, what's another one? Fucking. I mean, with the Kill Bill. Kill Bill. You have uh, the black woman named Copperhead. Yeah. And the white woman in Black Mamba. Black Mamba. It's just those tiny things that he puts in his movies too. But she, she's going around and she's killing a room of like 70 assassins. Yeah. And you'd never expect it from the start of the movie to where it went. That's John Wick before John Wick. <laughs> John Wick before John Wick with a, with a sword. Yo, yo, I have a theory actually about John okay. Wick. So there's a theory yeah. that John Wick is actually part of the Matrix. How? And he... So listen, so hey, listen. So he thinks everything that's happening is real life, mm -hmm. but actually is just replaying a story yeah. to keep Neo occupied. Whoa. That's crazy because the shit John Wick does is very like it's inhuman. Because think about it, right? All these hitmen are coming after him. Yeah, and they're kind of like dispensable. Feel me? There's so many. Yeah, yeah. They can just go through them. It's almost as if it's like the Matrix, bro. Yeah. It's almost as if like they're just bots. That's, <laughs> that's insane, bro. That's a simulation. Yeah. Even watching that movie, The Matrix, mm -hmm. crazy to think about everything that went into it and like. I don't think it's comparable to real life until the end of the movie where he's kind of shot back onto earth. Yeah. And he's walking the streets, a new man as if nothing ever happened, but he feels that everything happened. I know that must be so crazy. Cause I'm at, okay. Let's mm. say this is all a simulation yeah. and then you wake up, bro. Yeah. I think I would lose my mind. That's what I think too. You ever seen that post of it's like, what if you wake up as an alien and you have like a bong in your hand? <laughs> it's like, how is it standing around you? Like, <laughs> How was it? That's what I think about that's, a lot. Bro, that's crazy. That is crazy. But I feel like if, if the Neuralink um, technology comes out and we can go back yeah. to a time, I mean, every day you live, you can think about what you did 10 days ago. Maybe not exactly if you don't give it enough thought, but it feels like it happened. Mm -hmm. It might not have. I could have been like spawned in at this point specifically. Yo. Just to say this. Yeah. And then I'm imagining everything that happened before it. Yeah, man. Who knows? Because imagine you—you you just got spawned in, but you have yeah. all of the memories. Yeah. You ever seen those TikToks of they have like four people ready on go, and the dude walks down the street like a random civilian, and they're all walking past him, like wake up, wake up. Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw it with the twins, bro. That's the most. <laughs> that's crazy. That's the most fucked up shit I've ever. Bro, seen. that's so messed up, man. If that happened to me, I would actually like, I'd lose my mind right there. I'd be like, what the yeah. fuck? No, nah, that's just. It's funny until I think about what the person's going through. I hope they stop them after. Yeah, the video. yeah, like, they better tell joke. them. That would have kept me up at night. I would have gone insane. <laughs> it was like when you can't see the camera too. Yeah. You ever feel like if there was a prank, you'd, you'd know that it was being recorded? Sometimes. I don't know I, if it's like false confidence, but I feel like if someone came up to me like that, I'd probably be looking around immediately. I, I think, yeah. I think at some point, like mm -hmm. if it's saying something really, really weird, then I'll be like, oh, what the hell is this? Yeah. Just because I watch those videos though. Yeah. But if it's like, if you catch, if you catch me off like an off day, and I'm, yeah, not, I'm yeah, not really yeah. like caring. You're not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. Like, oh shit, I'll get caught. Fam. I'll get caught acting. Yeah. That's another thing, bro. You got to hold your tongue. This ties in with the, with the whole, you know, invest in yourself. Yeah. Any conversation you have with someone, try to be a good person because mm -hmm. you never know if that shit's being recorded. Exactly. Not saying you're a bad person off camera, but like, you know, don't get foolish because yeah. you think it's some nonchalant conversation. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because yeah. some people, they just say whatever they want and then... Yeah, and then Sometimes, you're on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> getting berated by the comment section, bro. You get the D'Angelo Russell fam just <laughs> in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Recording everything. Yeah. That's yeah. messed up, man. Have you ever been snaked like that, bro? Been snaked like that? Yeah, like... Well, maybe when I was like 
10. Um, I, I like this girl. Yeah, yeah. And my boys and I were talking about it. And they kind of helped me out in a sense. They recorded me saying it. And they oh. sent it to her. And they sent it to her. So in the moment, I was like, fuck, this is not what I wanted. Yeah. But in turn, it, not that it worked out. I'm not, not with this girl. Mm. But, you know, it, it kind of forced me to to interact with it, to deal with the, the You know feelings. what? Honestly, sometimes that's good. Yeah. I'm not saying the snaking part is good, but like the, the part of like. I it's snake. It was. It was like it was a little snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean just like um the the sense of putting your boy in a position, okay, you have to go now. You have to force him to do you it. You have right? to force him to do it, right? Yeah. I think that's that's actually really productive and I think that's really good. Yeah, I've started to do that now. If I ever like run into a situation where I kinda walk away and I'm like, Oh, I wish I did this or said this. Never negative situations. Mm-hmm. Like for example, let's say I see someone I want to take a picture of. Yeah. I'll walk past them. And then I'll be like, no, nah, why am I, why am I leaving? I'll turn around. And as soon as I'm turned around, I have to walk and I can't stop walking. Mm. until I go to that person and just ask them. Yeah. And that's made some cool connections. You know, it's, it's the people you never think you'd talk to, but if you force yourself, it's like, imagine if I never turned around. No, that's so true, bro. That's what, yeah. cause you never know the next person you meet might be nah. your soulmate or might be somebody that Could makes an impact on your life, you know? Yeah. The people I've been friends with or any, any relationship I've ever had, it's like people I don't expect. Mm. to have those feelings for that connection with you know i don't know if you feel the same yeah because honestly i've seen you in the weirdest places fam. <laughs> what what weird places no like i see you downtown sometimes or yeah, i see you like yeah, on the yeah. street i see you at school mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then i see you at muay thai fam i saw you at my gym yeah, and yeah, yeah. i think for me that was pretty weird because there, there wasn't a lot of people my age at the time yeah and when i saw you i'm like oh shit finally somebody my age i'm not your age though i'm a year younger no well the same but I, you like know. On that point, when I walked into that gym, I was kind of scared. Cause really? Like, not scared, but you know, I, you're nervous when you don't know anyone. Yeah, yeah. When I saw you and I looked up to you, because you were in my class, in my business class, I was like, this is a nice feeling. <laughs> yeah. And then we would train together, and I was like, actually a happy moment in my life. Yeah. Just to say it <laughs> truthfully, truthfully. I think, bro, honestly, sometimes I think those people are put there for a reason. Yeah. Just for the later on. Yeah. Not even just for the present, for the later on. For bro. the later on, yeah. Right? Because I talk about... Me and my friend, my friend Sanjay, mm-hmm. I met him like, I want to say years, years, years ago during a, a lifeguard training. Okay. And I didn't know I would see him mm-hmm. at Ryerson. And he ended up being one of the first people I recognized at Ryerson to be somebody I knew. Right. So I saw him. I ended up talking to him. Just so happens we have almost all the same classes. Yeah, that's crazy. Cra- I haven't talked to this guy ever since like the training. Yeah years bro it's insane making the connection mm-hmm. like there's some people maybe you'll go to camp with and you don't even bat an eye at them they're just you recognize their face and then boom you're like forced yeah to be in a group with them or you know you just have the same interests it's weird mm-hmm. and then the vibe is just like real you it know it blows my mind it mm-hmm. blows my mind there's some people even at like uh there's a skate park i used to go to yeah there are people i'd like watch them skateboard and i'd be like oh they look chill or maybe I, i'd look at them and judge them immediately and mm-hmm. be like i probably wouldn't like this person and then we end up being like really good friends, mm. which is crazy. Yeah. I think that one, those are the weirdest is like when you think you're not going to like somebody, but end yeah. up like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get a vibe from somebody in the beginning. Like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But when you take that time to open up that book or put mm-hmm. them in positions where they can show their true colors, then it's yeah, different. It is. Yeah. You got to give everyone a chance. Well, not everyone. If they're, if they're being. Yeah. yeah. About- <laughs> it depends. <laughs> depends who it is. Right. Yeah. 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 If, if someone's like showing you their cover you can judge a book by its cover yeah <laughs> but if not yeah give it a chance for sure. yo how was meeting a uh, debbie bro because i know you met debbie <laughs> debbie's my dog debbie, shout out debbie one this, time i'm gonna clip this up if you're watching this <laughs> debbie um so first time i met her i was downtown with some friends and we yeah. saw her and i had my camera i'm like yo can i take a picture of you she's like all right bet whatever cool interaction and we kind of just shot the shit for a little bit you know we're mm. laughing it's debbie she's yeah, funny <laughs> And then so a year later, I'm doing a a documentary with uh, B-Joy and Nolan Balance. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're in the subway station, like middle of the night. And Debbie runs by. She's like, yo, what's up? I'm like, (laughs) you remember me? She's like, yeah, yeah, what's good? What's good? And we actually had a good conversation. I know there's like this media view of Debbie, of her being like reckless and everything. But Mm -hmm. she's actually a a chill person. Mm. She'll have small talks with you and then she'll bounce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sick. That's sick. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of times, like we were talking about, we see the online presence, but don't know yeah. the actual, yeah. right? Until and you meet them in person. 
Yeah, she she like literally admit to you know I mean everyone everyone's like creating this character of themselves online. Yeah, whether it's true to you or whether it's true to what the people want to see. Mm-hmm. She was saying she had an interview on like Valentine's Day, and her boyfriend was mad at her because she said some shit right. Word. Even though on camera she was acting like nonchalant, like yeah, I don't yeah, care, yeah, I don't care. She's like, yeah, like it was a problem, this and that. And I'm Word. like, Whoa. yeah, like there's there's more to it, you mm-hmm. know. Hundred percent, because like you only when you only see one side of person, yeah, like you're not gonna know their true character. You have to really yeah. like open up. Yeah, you, know? you have exactly. to open up. Like even for me, bro. Sometimes I think honestly, sometimes I'm an introvert. Yeah, in in a sense, I think sometimes I'm an introvert unless I want to be extroverted. Yeah, right. But there's that kind of like mental switch, and sometimes I'm like, okay, on camera, I'm probably perceived as an extrovert just because of the way I talk, yeah. the way I connect with people. Well, fam, put me in a social setting. It depends who I want to be that day. Yeah, sometimes being an extrovert is like a job. I, I'm kind of. You think like, so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, when I go to events, like I'm, I'm kind of more like you, where I'm introverted when I'm at my house. I'll stay mm. inside for four days and yeah, not yeah, do yeah. anything. Well, not do anything. I'd be like grinding on my own time, but I won't see anyone. I won't really talk to anyone. I don't text. I don't Facetime. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of just in my zone. But the moment I have to go out for a shoot, I'm talking to people, and like it's not that it's forced. But for a moment, I'm almost like, you know, doing it as if it's a job. Because as soon as I'm yeah. done that event, I'm kind of burnt out socially. Oh, I get you. I get you. No, that's a real thing, though. That's you a real thing. Getting, like, social battery, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, by the end of the night, my social battery is low. And it's not that I faked being social. It's just that I only have so much to give. Yeah, I get you. Until I'm like, okay, back to my hole in the ground, you know, back to working. Yeah, I get you. I think one of the best, this is some good advice I can give to everybody out there. If yeah. you do struggle with being an introvert and trying to... I guess be more outgoing. Mm-hmm. Find a job that puts you in those positions where you have to talk to people. Yeah. And low key, this is why I think everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. One of my first jobs, right? Swim instructing, being a coach. Yeah. So being a coach, I have to be really good at explaining things. Yeah. At being very loud. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that brought me to this low key. Exactly. It gave me those skills for later on, and I didn't even know I'd be using them. And you were teaching kids as well, so you mm-hmm. know how to you know how to get the range. You're, te- you're talking to the parents, teaching the yeah, kids. Yeah, I was that. I was teaching adults and kids, bro. Yeah, man. So you know how to talk to everyone. You know how to get mm-hmm. that middle ground. But even for the, for the job I'm working now. It's more sales. As much as, you know, we're not going to bullshit and sell people stuff they don't need. Yeah. You do kind of have to, you know, pull. You have to pull yourself together and make everything seem nice. Yeah. I've learned a lot from just watching the people around me. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing you should never be ashamed of just like zipping your lip and just watching a master at work. Mm. You know? Yeah. Or a master in your books. But if they're good at what they do, just watch them. Try to copy the mannerisms, you know? Honestly, no. That's how that's how you get it done, bro. Yeah. That's how you get it done. You just find out what works Mm -hmm. see okay that guy does it like that maybe i can do that too but take your own flavor on it be like okay what am i more comfortable doing yeah boom make it the jet version yeah exactly you just spin it in your own way you obviously Mm -hmm. don't want to copy the person one-to-one you know then it's yeah then it's just over (laughs) you're not learning you're not learning if you're copying yeah but if you're just taking bits and pieces and you're putting it into your own you know setting Mm -hmm. then you're you're not only learning you're forcing yourself to experience it yeah you know who, who do you like um, interacting with more, adults or kids? Um, my first job was a skating instructor. Yeah, so kind of like so kids. Kids are funny as hell. Bro. They are. Bro. They honestly they are. are so funny. One kid like didn't want to do the drill. I was yeah. telling him to do. He's like, "I'm gonna throw up on you if you don't move." <laughs> and I'm like, "Bro, what? <laughs> How could you threaten that?" <laughs> He's still my boy. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he's funny. You know these kids. They beef with you one day, and then the next day they they your best friend. No, but sometimes that's how they show their affection to you. Or yeah, like, that's yeah, how yeah. they show they they actually care. Yeah, <laughs> no, they do care. They're great. I, I like kids, but I honestly I like uh, people my own age mm-hmm. as well. It's it's just cool to see the experience on both ends. What about adults? People older than you. Um, if we can reach a common ground, which normally we can, um, I love hearing from adults mm-hmm. like um i've even worked with adults you know they, they joke about working a nine to five will have you working with a 40 year old at 13 years <laughs> yeah, old, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> like you can learn a lot from these people mm-hmm. that have gone through it even ask for advice i'm going through this you know have you experienced this and most times they'll, they'll be able to sit you down and walk you through it yeah honestly yeah some of the best advice i heard was from co-workers that are older than me yeah some well, of you, the best ever yeah i mean there, there comes a point where even as a creative, um, let's take Jay-Z, for example. Mm-hmm. He passed the threshold of musician. He's now not, he, he's, he's not Jay-Z the musician anymore. He's mm-hmm. Jay-Z the wisdom. Yeah. Who made music. So I feel like that's kind of what you're getting at eventually. 
You think so? Yeah. I absolutely. hope so one day. I hope so one day. I think that's like the end goal for anyone that truly loves their craft. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to talk about it and teach about it as well as having the experience of, of doing it. Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. Because that, that's what I really want the most is just being able to inspire others. Yeah. And being able to be like, Carlos changed my life. Like, I really love that. When it's because correct. It, it makes me feel like my job my job was complete, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made yeah. me feel like, okay, I can die happy type shit. Yeah. Because, sh- bro, in my head, I always think back. I taught people how to swim. I taught some people how to fight. Yeah. And I speak all of this wisdom on the podcast. Yeah. Hopefully it works. You know yeah, what I mean? Hopefully it resonates with y'all. But I always wonder, damn, before I go, how many lives have I changed? Yeah. Well, if you died tomorrow, would you be happy with the things you said and the things you've taught? I, w- I think I would be. You think you would be? I think I would be, but like, I still want to do more. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I st- I there's like so much more. Be. There's so like much more. There's hours and hours of you this, talking on the internet yeah. now. And it's always been like consistently good content. Mm-hmm. You're either teaching, you know, expanding uh, people's knowledge of conspiracies, et cetera, mm-hmm. or you're just giving, like you're giving game. Yeah. Or your guests are giving game, mm-hmm. you know? It's some some cool shit, and it's dope because that shit's forever now. Because you can you can look that up way past on my time, yeah. you know. And I mean, it'd be cool to look back in a couple of years and think about how your ideologies have changed, yeah. How like your personality has changed, right? Mm-hmm. You've definitely gotten more confident from the first episode tonight. Oh yeah, right? for sure, for you sure. See, yeah, yeah, you yeah. look back and see that. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I can see myself becoming my true self. You know? Yeah. Does that make sense? Like no, it makes becoming the refined Carlos. Eh? Yeah, not even refined, but like to your full extent. Yeah, I feel like that's what life is. You're just trying to move towards your future self. As mm-hmm. Simply said. Yeah, I feel like it's just like a rock, right? And then you chip at it, you chip at it, make the statue, yeah, you yeah, see yeah. shapes, you know? Yeah, and then yeah, finally yeah. becomes a beautiful masterpiece. Yeah. And then you can set it there and it's forever. Okay, I do. I retract my statement. Refined is the right way to right? I can explain it like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Refined. Yeah. So even though, yo, so even though I'm really good at like talking to adults and talking to kids, mm-hmm. one thing I'm really bad at though, I'm really bad with babies, fam. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Why? What, what about babies? I don't know. I don't know. It, to me, like, when somebody gives me a baby and I have to hold them, it's it weird awkward. to me, bro. I don't know. Because yeah, I don't know yeah, what yeah. to say to a baby, feel me? Yeah. Because I think my character is not like the Goo Goo Gaga. Like, I yeah, can't, yeah, like, yeah. Ah, 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 you know, that's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be clowning in front of these babies. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So, ah, yeah. whenever I get a kid, like, a, like a baby baby yeah. in front of me, and then I, I feel like I have pressure on me, like, okay, how's Carlos going to react? Yeah. So, it's like an ongoing joke with all my family. They give me the baby. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like a fear of social interaction with a baby, almost like. I think that's my weakness, fam. I think that's what a lot of people have, though. Even me, like it's kind of awkward if I have yeah. a baby. Like, what do I do with it? I don't know either, it's bro. It's cute. It's cute. Yeah, it's, it's nice cute. to hold it. It's a nice feeling, but like, am I holding it right, bro? I'm going yeah, through all these things. Yeah, that's head. me. Maybe. I think it's just the overthinking. It's that baby anxiety, bro. <laughs> Yo, baby anxiety is real, fam. We just coined it right here. <laughs> Anyone, if you go on our Urban Dictionary, find baby anxiety. That's us, though. It. <laughs> but it's a true thing. I think um, women find it easier because just naturally. Yeah. Like going back to the primal instincts. Mm-hmm. You're motherly. You know how to how to hold the baby, you know? Yeah. I'm sure the baby enjoys it more, too, you know? Like, mm-hmm. They're just chilling. And I think just the voice is more soothing, too, because I have a kind of scary yeah. voice to a baby maybe it's scary stuff yeah well there's actually this i don't know if it's a, a theory or a study that mm. you know you ever been in a car in the back seat and the person driving or someone in the front seat is is a girl and yeah. you can't hear what she's saying yeah 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 same thing happens for them opposite because our voices are, are on different frequencies mm. men will hear men easier than women will hear women no way yeah that's you, crazy like, i didn't know that yeah so you know a couple times if you've ever if they've ever been like what would you say it's yeah, most yeah. likely because you're on a different frequency, at least vocally. Word. Yeah. That's Some crazy. crazy okay, yo, I have a theory for you, actually. Okay, okay. This one's a jokes theory, but... So there's a theory... Okay, let me ask... It has to start with a question first. Mm-hmm. Are you more of a titty guy or ass guy? Ass for sure. Ass, right? I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I know she's going to watch this, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So there's a theory, right? That originally, mm-hmm. our human nature directed us to the ass. Yeah. But when we were monkeys, right? When we were Neanderthals, mm-hmm. yeah. we were like walking on forest fam, right? Mm-hmm. So what was in our face? Titties? No, what was in our face? Ass. <laughs> <laughs> what the? F- <laughs> so like, no, like if we're walking on the... Yeah, yeah, when yeah, dog, yeah. When dogs greet each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do they see? That's what we were doing? So that's what we're doing. Shit, bro. But yeah. as we evolved... We stood up. We stood up. 
and our gay now shit. what's in our face titties that is a theory for sure but i feel like <laughs> I'm kidding. The fact that I took so long to, to think about, like, what, do we, what we're looking at, I'm like, I'm on all fours. But, nah. I don't know. Ass has just has been the better thing. When I was, when I was like, 12 or 13, I thought yeah. it was gay. Because I'm like, what? I didn't see, the, I didn't see the, the appeal in ass. All my friends are talking about, oh, this and that, this and that. That's why? And then I hit That's puberty. I hit puberty. Yeah. And I saw, like, a fatty walk by. And I was like... <laughs> For some reason, just the way it moved, I was something in me. I was like, "Never mind, bro. Never mind." And that's what did it for me. But I, that I, I just thought, I'm like, "What's wrong with that's me? an animal instinct, bro?" Yeah, but you, it doesn't you tapped kick in. in. I tapped in, bro. I tapped you in. You tapped in, and I've been there, <laughs> and I've been there since, bro. I'm not shifting my, I'm not shifting my answer. <laughs> team big booty. Yeah, team big booty. I mean, there's, there's been a thing going around on um, TikTok about Hooters. You see, they got a new uniform. Hooters. Yeah, so they have less like um, ass coverage on the Hooters shorts now. Um, theory being that our obsession with boobs has shifted to Word. over the years. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it, I think it's true though. It, it has moved a little bit, especially with music. Yeah, that's that, been glorified. Yeah, so that's I think Hooters like actual team has taken that advance and notice. You know, everything now is just um. <laughs> that's so funny hunting. to say, fam. <laughs> It's funny to say, but scientifically, it's there. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> oh, no that's some real. Shit, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it more. <laughs> Not that I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't plan on. Going. Straight up. <laughs> I had to drop the Travis Scott. I had to drop the that Travis one. Scott. Bro. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But scientifically proven. So no, because honestly, they do take advantage. Whatever they see, yeah, and they can see opportunity there. Yo, mm -hmm. they'll take it. Yeah, well, they always have beautiful women and men working at, like, higher class establishments as well. Mm -hmm. They're going to hire people that are more pleasing to look at or people that you're interested in because you're going to be happier being there. Yeah. And did you know there's an actual law mm -hmm. that states, it's called the law, law of attractiveness, right? Okay. And it states that more attractive people, mm -hmm. they, they tend to look smarter and seem smarter than the uglier person. Really? Yeah. I've never taken that into subconsciously wow. that's what we see subconsciously subconsciously yeah. that's what we see i mean if you see an attractive person or someone that's well dressed i feel like you automatically assume they're successful in a way as well and they're like put together you which know? in turns mean which in turn means they were probably smart you yeah. know so Actually, i might just yeah. be putting two and two together but that makes sense that makes total sense it does make sense bro because seeing seeing like even politicians and shit yeah. they're always in a suit you know they're always in a suit they yeah. always look like the smart guy in the room yeah I love how we segue from ass to politics <laughs> so smoothly. <laughs> I'm just begging that. But yeah, I mean, politicians, another big voice. Yeah. They don't get to use it. They have teams running their social media. What is, I mean, I believe Trump was on his Twitter. But Joe oh, Biden, yeah, for sure. Joe Biden is definitely. Bro, not honestly, his. like no hate, no hate. Mm -hmm. But Joe Biden, fam, I feel like they put him in power so that the other people can be in power. Who? Does that make sense? Kamala Harris? So, like, the team can be in power rather than Joe Biden. I feel like um, a lot of the push now versus back in the day, you know, you're you're voting for someone that's going to benefit you financially, yeah. tax-wise. Now it's kind of like a social media game. Kamala mm -hmm. Harris, I'm not pol political at yeah, all. I don't I, care we're Canadian, this. first of all. <laughs> yeah, we're Canadian. Um, but Kamala Harris, she's black and she's a woman. Yeah. Other than, uh, you know, the Obamas, we didn't have that in power. So I feel like it was more like a popularity game Word. at that point. It, it definitely helped. Yeah. Obviously, I have no stance on who's better, but she's there now. Mm -hmm. People love it because it's, it's a minority and she's a woman as well. She's in power. Yeah. So shout out to her. Mm -hmm. I want to see more like I want to see that movement in freaking influencers, bro. I want to see more like, you know, a lot of the most popular creators right now are white. And it even ties into the to the whole, you know, um, the way we perceive beauty. Yeah. As a kid, all these movies, you're seeing these white women. Bro, honestly, I'm going to be honest. I think that's why I have a thing for a lot of white women. Yeah. It's because of the movies and everything I watch. It depends on who you grow up around. Like, yeah. everyone's taste is completely developed by what they consume. Yeah. So that's why, you know, scientifically, I'm not talking shit here, white women have been perceived as you know beautiful in most cases even though um the beauty that we see a lot of the cosmetic um things they do to themselves are from black culture yeah not even white women in general mm -hmm. um big lips you know certain features that we're cosmetically trying to reach that Yo, been in that's so culture. true yeah yeah that's so true and now it's become like a mix of it and it becomes like 
that's what they're yeah. trying to it's a nice amalgamation of the two but you yeah. gotta you gotta remember that like these um foreign looks like mm-hmm. asian looks people you know they want to play with their eyes and everything yeah. um cosmetically it's all like taking the best from Yo. each culture and putting it into your own yeah fam. i respect it people can make the changes they want mm-hmm. but you know times but, have changed did you know you know you watch squid game you finish it no i watched one episode you watch one episode <laughs> it took okay me two days to watch the first one bro i told you my attention span yeah, was yeah, not yeah. Having that. <laughs> But you know, you know, um, say Bilk though, like number 67. Yeah. I bagged that as soon as the show started, mm. I knew, I knew it was going to be a problem, bro. <laughs> so take this in, bro. Did you know, mm-hmm. say Bilk, they looked into it. Why is she so attractive? Right. Mm-hmm. They did a study. So her face is actually more attractive to Western society than to Asia. Yeah. So take this in. They actually found out like, you know how they do the studies with the measurements and shit. Mm-hmm. She has a very symmetrical face yeah. to the point where it matches exactly to the Western standard. Standard, Yeah, the beauty standards are different. Mm-hmm. I mean, in some countries, they want you to be more thick, more voluptuous, right? Whereas yeah. in these cultures, um, like Canadian, U.S. culture, um, it's perceived more beautiful to be skinny, right? Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. It's crazy. So it's like how they change from place to place is insane to look at. Why we, why we think she's more beautiful is, is because she hits our... Yeah, she, she hits the receptors. Bro. She hits the the criteria, she, bro. She takes off all the boxes. And I hate I hate how that that's what it is though. It's like a criteria because mm-hmm. that's what again that's what's drilled into us now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's almost drilled into us, but not on purpose. Like, I know. You just like what you like. You can't be you can't be hating on yourself. For, yeah, exactly. For being attracted to certain things, mm-hmm. you know. Speaking of Squid Game, though, I did want us to tell you a theory because okay, I yeah, you don't you don't have to know the whole show to. to I, it's been it. spoiled so many times on TikTok, bro. I've definitely seen enough to, to okay run a conversation. This this is kind of a crazy theory. I want you to hear it. Mm-hmm. So there's a theory that Squid Game mm-hmm. might actually be connected to Nigeria. Really? Okay, I was not expecting that. It's very odd, right? Very yeah. odd. What do you mean Nigeria? What are you talking about? I right? was specific. So take this in. Uh-huh. Somebody in my DMs actually sent me this. Right. He said, "You know those symbols, the triangle, the circle, and the, and the square. Mm-hmm. So the triangle, the circle, and the square, fam. It's on the Nigerian money. Whoa, shit. So it's on the up. Nigerian bills. So you see That's that the crazy. circle, triangle, and square. Now, yeah." There's more evidence to this. Okay. The track suits they wear, mm-hmm. right? What color? Blue and red. No, green, bro. It's green. It's green, isn't it green? <laughs> it was blue. Or it's, it's like, like teal. Blue it's, green. it's blue green. It's, it's like blue Yo, green. My bad. Keep going. <laughs> let me say that. Let me say that. So the track suits they wear yeah. are green, right? Green and red. Yeah. The green and then the red are like the guards. Yeah. But but the the players themselves, green track suits. Mm-hmm. Now in the prisons in Nigeria, the color of their jumpsuits is green are green whoa so you're saying they're like trying to expose something so the conspiracy is Mm -hmm. please nobody come for me the conspiracy is that they're trying to show and they're trying to represent the crazy imbalance of rich and poor within nigeria all right that makes sense that's not even a a touchy subject that's kind of just like education through that's honestly yeah yeah even you ever seen uh hidden gems oh yeah yeah that movie was crazy. Most stressful film I've ever seen. Oh, wait, Uncut Gems, right? Uncut Gems. I say yeah. Hidden Gems. <laughs> uncut <laughs> Gems, yeah. <laughs> that's a completely different Adam question. Sandler. Yeah, going back to Adam Sandler. Going back to Adam Sandler, my twin. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> For some reason. Um, the start of that movie started in the mines. Yeah. Right? In mm-hmm. The diamond mines. And, you know, all this path of greed throughout the movie. He's flipping these things. He's flipping these things the whole time. This opal gem is, like, in his hands. Mm-hmm. Being used for wrong. And people busted their ass to get it. And then he just dies at the end. Yeah. So it's like the gem never did. Spoiler alert. <laughs> he doesn't die. I was tweaking. He it's all good. It's all good. It's an old movie. It's an old movie. <laughs> it's an old movie. He actually um, becomes one of the best uh, sellers <laughs> in New York, wherever he was at. My bad. I cut you off. But no, you're good. No, I'm just saying it's it shows it's another example of this like social issue where yeah. people are mining for essentially dumbasses to go around and put themselves in debt. Mm-hmm. You know, make poor decisions with something that was so hard worked for. Yeah. And it was just what? It was just like a physical item. Physical item. And he died at the end. You don't get to take these physical material things when you're gone. Yeah. That's some deep shit, bro. Because I always think about it like, what am I really going to take from this life? Is just my memories, my experiences. Yeah. Like, I'm not taking my shoes with me. No. Nah. me. I'm not taking my katana up there. I wish right? you, you wish you could, though. I, I wish I do. could, honestly. 
<laughs> yeah. But eventually, I feel like all we bring with us is our memories, our consciousness, our dreams, yeah. whatever we've done, accomplishments. That's yeah. it. I feel like you can carry your energy to a new host, like a new body. You, you think know, so? almost the reincarnation theory where you come back. Some people are old souls. Some people are young souls, you know? Mm-hmm. There's some people that have this kind of like old timey feel to them, more mature, yeah. off rip. Like even as a child, they just move like they've done this before. I feel you. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's there's, there's a, a high probability that when we die, our spirits just put into another body. Mm-hmm. And we get to run it back with not only experience, but like instinct through experience. Mm-hmm. And I think eventually when you reach a certain point mm. then you transcend it's like the caste system yeah something like that i don't think that's the correct word but it, I, no i don't think it's is it actually it might be i feel like the caste system is the physical like you know color of your skin puts you in a different spot i don't know i don't know we're, don't we're not speak, educated yeah. on that yeah, yeah. but uh, th- there is something like that in hinduism i believe mm-hmm. or buddhism to where you you kind of go until you're fulfilled and yeah. you reach nirvana mm-hmm. and at that point there's no point being in a body you're you're elite yeah that's you're you're the physical doesn't mean nothing to you at that point yeah so yeah bro honestly just live life exactly how you want to live it man mm-hmm. do what you want to do and share the experience you want to share because eventually i don't think we're taking any like none of this none of this dash you know like yeah. none, none of our money is gonna come with us in the afterlife like yeah this is it enjoy your time live in the moment yeah like truly appreciate the the place you've been put in in the moment mm-hmm. if, you're, if you have a smile on your face remember it and feel it you know yeah exactly man all it is feel the present just be happy be peaceful honestly try to be yeah all right let's wrap it up so thank you jeff for coming through i love having you on bro if you guys haven't already check out the vlog channel check out the links in the description check out wiko studios link in the bio you want to shout out anything Jetlag underscore on instagram post my photography nfts on there that's about it though all right go check out jet shit and yeah jumpers jump out